Hey, this is Kenji. Uh, I'm gonna quickly show you how I get ready to make a Neapolitan pizza, like including the specific ingredients I typically use. Um, so first off, um, tomatoes. Um, these are, so the Cento used to make DOP San Marzano's. Uh, DOP is the sort of government certified tomatoes. They don't do that anymore, but they have this, um, they have this Pomodoro San Marzano certified thing, which I think are actually really good. Um, they're available in almost every supermarket. If I can't get these, then I'll get, um, Oh, if I can get them, actually, what I'll get usually is Bianco de Napoli, which is a Chris Bianco's um, brand of tomatoes from, um, they're grown in California. They're excellent. Um, so I'm just taking a hand blender, real brief buzzes in there. I don't want to like make it into a complete puree, but I do want to break down the, um, the whole tomatoes. Um, so these ones come packed in puree. If your tomatoes come packed in water or in tomato juice, um, you want to give them a little drain for, so just dump them into a strainer give them a little drain, um, and then puree them, otherwise they'll be too watery. So all it is is tomatoes and salt, and that's it. All done. A few buzzes. That's it. Mm. All right, so then for my cheese, um, fresh mozzarella, um, that's what you use for Neapolitan-style pizzas. Uh, you can get the stuff, stuff imported from Italy, um, and it's great. Uh, if you get the DOP stuff, water buffalo milk. Um, I actually prefer this brand, um, Boof. It comes from South America. Actually, it comes from Colombia. Um, I've I've actually even been to the factory where they make this. Um, it's all um, it's all uh, Colombian water buffaloes. Um, excellent stuff. Um, actually, I'll, I'll put some B-roll up right now of the uh, of the uh, the visit to that factory. Maybe I'll talk more about this later. But this is available at like Whole Foods and sort of fancier markets. Um, I find it actually is a little nicer generally than the imported Italian stuff only because it's usually a little fresher um, and so when you buy the imported Italian stuff it often has a sort of funkiness to it that um, is not really supposed to be there um, which is you know I always thought that that funkiness was something that was a product of it being water buffalo milk um, and so when I you know when I used to eat it growing up or when I tried the fresh mozzarella I was like okay that's what real mozzarella tastes like but then when I actually went to um, Naples and tried the real fresh mo buffalo milk mozzarella there it doesn't have any of that funkiness at all it's just a really nice clean flavor um, and that's what I um, go for for my mozzarella now so boof I, I think it, it tends to be a little bit fresher in the market so it doesn't have that funkiness it just has the richness um, if you can't get water buffalo mozzarella you can use regular mozzarella of course um, well it would be called um, Fior di latte, but you know, cow's milk mozzarella is totally fine. Um, it just won't have quite the same richness. So when it comes packed in water like this, you do want to kind of tear off chunks of it. Um, if you try and just put it straight on your pizza, it'll uh, it'll get super watery. So what I do is I let it sit. Basically, when I pull out my pizza to proof, I pull out the mozzarella at the same time. I tear it into chunks. That's about enough for two pizzas here. Um, you pull it into chunks and uh, you just let it kind of sit in a strainer and let all that excess liquid drain off. Oh, these are regular old um, plum tomatoes, uh, non-San non Marzano's, because they're like kind of generic supermarket brand. Um, the difference is not, you know, the, the difference is not huge, but San Marzano tomatoes tend to be um, both sweeter and more acidic, um, which gives them a brighter flavor uh, than your standard sort of plum tomato, standard Roma tomato. Um, all right, so then the last thing is fresh basil. Of course, um, actually not the last thing, fresh basil. You want a good olive oil, um, California olive ranch. I'm going to use the, um, Arbequina. Um, you, on any, honestly, any olive oil that you enjoy, um, that has a nice flavor, you know, a nice full flavor, um, is going to be fine on your pizza. Um, I, I like California olive ranch. Um, there's this not sponsored, not an ad. I just like them, um, and so I'm going to use it. Um, my other favorite, my other favorite local um, olive oil is Seca Hills. You can get that around here too in California. I don't know if you can get it where you live. Try a few different olive oils, whatever's available locally. Taste it. See the one you like the most. Don't pay attention to the label. Pay attention to the cost if you have to, um, and go with the one that you like. Don't listen to what anyone tells you about what is good and bad. You should go with your own taste. Um, although I will say that a good olive oil, things that you should generally, like what experts sort of agree are in a good olive oil, so you want, um, you know, there, there's all different styles, but generally like a little bit of pepperiness and bitterness sort of in the back of the throat, um, a little bit of a burn, that is actually a sort of desirable trait in olive oil because um, it kind of enhances other flavors. That's generally seen as a, a desirable trait that people maybe are not 
don't immediately notice that they like. Um, but when you eat it with other foods, it, it brings out a lot of other flavors. So, <clears throat> all right, and now the final thing, I got my dough going here. This is a sort of more strictly Neapolitan pizza dough than the last one I made, which got totally messed up. This one, um, made this morning in the food processor. Um, 65% hydration. This is a double O uh, bread flour, the blue kind. Sorry, double O pizza flour, caputo. Um, you can use it, you can use bread flour, um, but I tend to, for this style of pizza, I do like to use the actual Neapolitan stuff, um, the Italian stuff um, that's ground more finely. 65% uh, hydration, 3% salt, 1.5% um, yeast, and that's it. Um, and then I let it, I uh, put it in the food processor. I let it ride around the blade, you know, bring it, start the food processor, let it come into a ball and then let it ride around the blade for about 30 seconds um, and then dump it into a bowl to bulk ferment. And this has been in there since well, around 10 a.m. So about five hours, five, six hours. Um, now I'm going to take them out and uh, we're going to do our, shape them into balls. Oh, you can see that. So the way I was doing that, so I kind of fold over the top and push them around. Put, tuck it into the bottom so that you end up with like a little pinch at the bottom so it looks kind of like a like a balloon you know and then um and then i as i'm doing that i kind of twist it around and pinch with my thumb and my finger here like that and that gives you a nice smooth surface on the top and then you can put it down on a dry spot on your board no flour and that'll really sort of tighten up that bottom um, if you don't have a proofing box like this, this is a specifically made for pizza. If you don't have a proofing box like that, um, any sort of plastic container will do, or you can use a metal, you can use a couple metal bowls. Um, it doesn't really matter that much. Now we're going to let that sit for a couple hours. Um, we got our olive oil, we got our basil, we got our mozzarella, we got our tomatoes. Stick a spoon in that tomatoes. I guess I'll use this spoon. Um, and some salt is the only other thing we need. Got some of this uh, nice coarse sea salt. And that's it. Um, all right, so ready to bake pizza. Um, today I'm gonna actually test out two different ovens side by side. Um, the Rockbox and the uh, Rockbox and the uh, Unicoda. Um, two of my favorite pizza ovens, outdoor pizza ovens. So um, that'll probably be in a separate video. This video is all just about prepping your station. And here we go. All right, see you later.